So good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> Gives me great pleasure to introduce Professor uh, Dezue, who is going to give a series of lectures. We look forward to that. Okay, so, uh, well, thank you very much for your invitation. It's always a pleasure to be back to, to IMSC. Uh, first time for the Silver Jubilee of, uh, of uh, IMSC, 87. Uh, 25 years. Uh, okay, this time I am invited with hopefully the participation of uh, Spark. Spark is a scheme for promotion of advanced re of academic uh, and uh, research uh, collaboration, something like that. So it is uh, okay. So, uh, so in the, in that frame, I am I have the pleasure to give some uh, uh, six lectures, which I try to make independent in some way. So. The, it's not something continuous, uh, so there won't be all the proofs and things like that, but try to give you some idea, and there is some leading thread. Leading, lead, leading thread? Is a thread is okay. Yeah, a leading thread, which is uh, consecutive values, uh, local distribution of arithmetic functions, so it can be the values which are in short intervals, it can be also the values that take on consecutive integers, things of this kind, okay? Or distribution in s residue classes or something like that, so local in many different meanings. So I am starting today with something which is dire directly connected with the recent work that has been done in collaboration with uh, Shaoli Gun and uh, Ayuni Pramod, uh, Pramod Ayuni. I, I don't know where he is now, but uh, okay, it should be somewhere. In okay, so, uh, and uh, this is something about the values of the phi function. So phi function will be, will be everywhere, Euler's function. So Euler function phi of m is m times the product when p divides m of 1 minus 1 over p. You have several ways to write it. It counts the number of integers between 1 and m which are co-prime with m. Okay, it's used in several things. Uh, okay, this is possibly the form I am going to, to use often, but no, not the only one. It is a multiplicative function as you can see. Uh, I want to say that uh, there are a few things I will refer to, which are some preliminary lectures I gave in May, which are available on the IMSC uh, YouTube channel. Uh, and uh, I am not uh, assuming that you know everything in that, but for some results which have been explained there, I just will consider it as a black box, okay? So, okay, so uh, our idea is to know you have these values, so those are integers. You, you can also write it in, in different ways. I told you it is the cardinality of the number of elements in 1m, and so it is something which is an integer indeed. Um, and uh, you are looking at the values of phi of m, and you want to see how they are distributed. So this was the question that was raised by uh, Pramod and, uh, and his friends, and uh, this is what we, <coughs> what we are going to, to do. So before that, I want to say something about densities. Hmm? Ah, you are you are the you are the, th the 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 second guy of the of this. There's a group of three, and you are you are involved. Okay, good, very good. Uh, so uh, I would like to start with densities, and uh, maybe first to say something about what are the natural densities. Natural densities. I have to be careful because the board is not that that huge. Uh, essentially, what what we call a density is something which takes value in zero one. So I am not writing too much on the board. Sorry, uh, it is something which takes value in zero one. And essentially, what you want is that if you have the empty set, the density is zero. If you have the full set, all the integers, the density is one. And if something A is included in B, then the density of B is at most equal to the density, the density of A is at most equal to the density of B, okay? 
So this is what you what you mean. So one way to 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 have a density, the natural density, what you do, you have a set A, which is in N. Uh, something about sequence. This is a bit complicated, but there are definitely two meanings of sequence, and we use both of them. One meaning of a sequence is a subset of the integers. The integers being either the Bourbaki with a zero or the American way with uh, with non-zero. You just count. You see the way you count stairs. And uh, this is quite interesting. In Europe, you count stairs starting with zero, ground floor. And uh, in the States, you start with one. The ground floor is one. And in India, you live with both. If you take the lift in this building, you have two ways to, to uh, not exactly this building. In this building, it starts with the one. But if you go to the library, uh, it starts with a zero. So you are just living with the, with the two things. OK, so n is the integers. And uh, if it is useful to know what it is, we'll make it precise. But uh, OK, let us say here it will be the start. It starts with the 1. So when you count uh, the element, so you can count the element up to n. So you have the counting function, a of x, will be the number of elements in a, the number of uh, elements n in a which are at most equal to x. So this is the counting function. So it is a finite number, and it is at most x. And uh, the density would be to look at a of x over x. This is always between 0 and 1. And uh, what you try to look at is the limit. So of course, the limit may not exist when x tends to infinity. So essentially, this would be called, if the limit exists, you will call that with a d, d of a. And uh, if it does not exist, at least you can always take the limb sup or the limb inf, and this will be the upper density or the lower density. Okay, And this will be for different things. Okay, So uh, I don't want to, to spend too much time on these densities. Uh, just to tell you something that you have bad guys for the density. Example of bad guys. Uh, well, you have good guys. If you take the prime numbers, you see prime numbers, it's not too difficult to show that the number of prime number to x is something which is a big O of x over log x. It is equivalent. This is prime number theorem. But to get an upper bound, this is not too difficult. And to show that the limit exists because the limit sup is equal to 0. And so the limit exists is equal to 0 for prime numbers. <coughs> Keep that in mind. This will be useful later on. Uh, so bad guys Interesting one is if you take, for example, let us call it a1. a1 is the set of the integers such that the uh, first digit in base 10 is 1. So this is exactly the type of a, a set, quite natural set, for which you have no density, because just you count a1 of 10 to the k, minus 1, if you wish. So you have, you see, what you will have is ending this sequence. When you cut it at this point, you will end with a, all the integer, starting with a 2, with a 3, with a 4, 5, 9, and then you stop. So you have a bunch of elements which are not equal to that. But then if you go to the next step, which will be a1 of 10 to the k plus 1, uh, then you will have n not even uh, 2 times. Okay. This will be 2 times 10 to the k minus 1, if you wish. Then you end with a large group of elements which are ending with a 1. So it is easy to see that the limb soup is different from the limb inf. So it's not something you see stupid to, to see to, to meet. You meet every day uh, sets of integer for which there is no natural density. OK, good. So this is the point. And now the, the point I would like to, to, to work a bit on is to consider v. I think it was used for values. But this has been 
<coughs> studied long ago. Uh, v is the set of the n uh, such that there exists some m for which uh, m is equal to f no. Yes, m. There exists n such so that n is equal to phi of m. This is the, the set of the values of uh, of the um, phi function. Okay. So this is due to Shubaya, Shivashankara, Narayan, and Pillai that this set has zero density. Okay. So I will just write SSP Lai if you allow me. SSP Lai showed that uh, the density of V is equal to zero. Okay. So let me give you an idea how you can get that. Uh, okay. First, uh, phi of n. So you want to see all the values up to x of that. So you give x, and you are looking So we look at v of x. Okay, which is the num the, the n all the elements for which the value is less than x. Well, it doesn't mean that I'm taking all the n up to x, because phi of m is smaller than m. But phi of m is not much smaller than m. You have this lower b upper bound. Let us say this is a lemma. You get that with the Merton's uh, theorem. We so Merton's refers to to me and uh, something like prime number theorem, a slightly weaker form of this, uh, the lemma tells you the following. One has phi of m, phi of n is larger than 1 plus little of 1 times e to the minus gamma. Forget about that. This is a constant, and that's it, over log log n. Yep, 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 n over log log n. Okay, so it means that to find the value of v which is less than x, you cannot get it if n is really very large. Okay, so what you will get is something like that. Let us say that, uh, well, uh, okay, let us say that. To reach, this implies to reach a value of phi of n, which is less than x, it is enough. You, you only have to consider the m, which are less than something which will be x log log x. You can look at the constant. This is about the, the only thing. Because if you look at that, for this value, you will have x log log x. And when you have the log log, I didn't write it correctly, the log log n. And the log log n will be essentially log log x. And uh, there will be something which is not at that. And you have this constant. And up to a constant, this would be enough. So you don't have to go too far. However, there are already more than x number to consider. I know log log x is not very large, but it is supposed to tend to infinity. I never saw that. But, uh, log log x is a very, very small function. OK, so this is our first point. Now, what else? is of interest for us. Ah, what, what are we going to, to do for that? You see, to, to get the value of, um, mm, y 
Yes. Uh, I want you to know how to to present you. Yes. Okay. L let me write it in a, in a different way for phi of m. Phi of m. You can write it in the following way. If m is a product of prime p to the alpha 1, blah, 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 p to the alpha r, then phi of m is uh, p, alpha, p alpha 1 minus 1, p alpha 1 minus 1, time one p minus 1, blah, 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 p of alpha r minus 1, Some something is wrong. This is P one. We have P one P R. P one P one P R. P R minus one. This is okay. So you see that well, one of these primes may be even. There are not too many even <coughs> primes. One of them, but for the other ones, each time you have a different factor, boom, you have something which is a two that will occur in that. So that is to say that the values of v usually will have a large power of 2. But if something is divisible by 8, you have up to x, you have only x over 8 elements which are divisible by that. So what you would like to say is to say, OK, on the one hand, I have numbers which have few prime factors. Okay, different prime factors. And on the other hand, I have the element with many prime factors. Many prime factors tell me that phi of b <coughs> is small. And maybe if there are too many prime factors, the, you have many of them. <coughs> so this is the lemma 2. I think essentially you find it in, uh, in Ramanujan or Hardy and Ramanujan, something like that. So there exist k0 and k1, such that for any r larger than 1, the number of integers up to x Maybe the x I will use is the x log log x. If you prefer, I put a y here, up to y, which have air prime factors is less than something which is k1 r x log log x to the r minus 1 divided by log x. And this is uniformly for y larger than 2. Yes, k naught is. Right, plus k naught. And this is not x, this is y, because I changed the notation. OK? Yes, thank you. OK, so how do you prove this? If you look at r is equal to 1, essentially what you are counting is the number of prime, at most one prime factor. And this number of prime, you know, is something which is big O of y over log y. Okay, so this is a weak form of the prime number you start with, and then you just go by induction. Okay, I I don't go into this. Essentially, this is r is equal to one is the prime fa is a prime uh, is the the. Uh, Prime theorem, yeah, 
and uh, and then you have uh, and then you you have induction. Okay. So yes, I should really write what I I should. I don't think so. There, 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 there's a. Yes, but uh, I, I, wa I want to have a, an upper bound, well, and this upper bound is enough. I don't, uh, I don't need about that. Okay, so now I can say something. The consequence is that I can say something about Vx. So Vx is, I have the elements which have at most r prime factors and the elements which have at least, or we have more than r prime factor. For the one which are more than r prime factor, it is the number of elements I have to consider. In this big O, you can put, instead I, indeed I could have put a 2. You just have to, to check with this number that it is enough to have a 2. But this has no importance for us. And so you have this, but since they have a lot of prime factors, they have a lot of odd prime factors, and so there is a large power of, yeah, of two. So this is for the one who has many prime factors. And for the one who don't have many prime factors, you use this. And so it will give you something which is plus k1 r minus 1. And uh, then there is something which will be x log log x plus k0 to the power r plus 1. This is r plus 1, and this is divided by log x. The, the, there is a log x extra. The log x extra correspond to this one. Because you have to count up to x log log x, and not simply up to x. So compared with that, you have a, an extra log log x factor. Okay, And now what you do is you try to get the, the best you can do, and so choose what is nice is that everything is uniform here. And you take choice. You choose r is equal to log, log, log x square. Okay, And I let you do the computation. And then you have something which shows you that v of x is little o of x. Even something effective a bit more than that. Okay. Well, I did a bit better than, uh, than this. But essentially, this is the idea of, uh, for, for proving that v of x is, is equal to 0. So essentially, you have the elements for which you have few prime factors. They are not numerous. And the elements which have many prime factors, but then their phi is divisible by a high power of 2. Okay, And then you make the balance between those two, and you get this. Uh, I think the, the best which is known now is something from Kevin Ford. So you can, Kevin Ford. <coughs> well, then you will find it as now the, what, what is known as the best upper bound for that. Okay, not, a, not only upper bound, but essentially something in which you have an equivalent in the exponent. So it's some good thing. <coughs> okay. So this is our business. So we keep that on the side. What time is it? Yes, okay. I can, I can tell you a bit more before going back to uh, Vx. <coughs> so what we want to, what in, in, in the last point, what we, what we did with, the, with the Shaoli and then Pramod was really to look at what are the values we know that it has zero density, but are there clusters in it? So this is what we want to, what we want to check. But before that, I want also to say a few, ter a few something about another density, which is a very nice one, which is the logarithmic density.
<coughs> so you see the density of A with upper or lower or just like that is something when what you count is something where you have some limit. And then what you are doing is summing over well, summing A belongs to A. And A is at most x of 1. And of course, what you are putting here is something which is the summation when A belongs to n and A up to x to the minus 1. OK? So this is what you do. But indeed, it is possible. This, this was the 1 over x, you remember? 1 over x times the cardinality of the element in A of 2x. But what you can do is definitely to change this and to try to put some weight here. And then you divide by this weight. The weight is positive. It's a positive function, non-negative function that are positive. And you see that what you get here is something which is, of course, since the weight is positive, it's always less than 1, <coughs> or at most 1, and it is positive. And if you have a sequence which is included A included in B, this sum will be the same, but this one will increase. And so you have the nice uh, uh, characterization you, you wanted for a, for a density. The nice properties of a density are satisfied with this. So one of the weight which is well used, you, you have a lot of, uh, of weights and you have discussion about all the <coughs> all these uh, densities and things like that. <coughs> okay? One of the weight we are going to use and we are going to use it here is one over a. So definitely you give some importance to the first element and then when you when you go further you give you give less and less importance to, to these elements. So again, you will do something like that, will be the, let us say, well, let us say like that. This will be the density, and this will be the limit. So of course, no, what you put here is something which is essentially 1 over log x. You don't care whether it is exactly this sum, which is not exactly 1 over log x, but there is a constant. You don't care about the constant because you are going to look at the limit, and <coughs> this, li this constant will have no interest. So you can put it 1 over log x. So of course, you start to count only when x is larger than 1. It's not the problem. But since we are going to see at the limit when x tends to infinity, this has no importance. And then you have the summation. a belongs to a of 1 over a. a, a up to x. And again, you see, you may put the uh, superior density, the uh, density, the inferior density, the limb sub, the limb inf, if, uh, if it doesn't exist. OK? Now, if you know the counting function, it's not too difficult to get what is this sum just by partial summation. <coughs> Confer me. OK, and if we go back to our favorite example of the bad guy, the bad guy becomes a good guy. And we have, where is it? OK. You remember what we were writing. So now I write A S is the set of the integers n such that n start with the n, that is to say that it is less than 2 to the 10 to the k for some k. So we have the, the union over k of the set of n of, oh, just write it that way. It would be even easier. The element which are between uh, 10 to the k 
n2 times n to the k, and you take the union of those sets, which are the intervals. That is to say, the intervals counting only the integers in it. So you look at all the integers, which are here. So this is, this is not true, but it will become true soon. This is between s and s plus 1. So this is the numbers. We start with the s in base 10. Okay. And then since you have only blocks, it's not too complicated to count this by partial summation or just with bare hands. And you will notice that this density exists that you have a uh, proposition, let us say, proposition. You have the following that the logarithmic density of AS exists and is equal. to log s plus 1 minus log s divided by log 10. And this is interesting, because if you are looking at what is this density, so you put s here. And you put the delta density of AS. No, sorry. You put S here. And you put the delta density of AS. One, two, three, four, up to nine. And the value you get are Point thirty, blah blah blah. Of course, point twelve, point twelve. No, this was eighteen. Sorry, uh, point four, point ten. You see, this going down. This is point oh four six. So in some way, there are much more integers which start with a one than with a two and more with a 2 than with a 3. And essentially, about half the number start either with a 1 or with a 2. This is well known, and this is well known by uh, fiscal administration. And uh, if there are too many numbers which, uh, which starts with a, with a 9 or with an 8 or something like that, they are feeling that there may be someone, someone cheating somewhere. This is really useful for that purpose. It's decreasing, you say? It is decreasing, yes. So this was, this was a phenomenon that was uh, observed only already in the 19th century. I think the first one, I don't remember. Uh, the, the name which is going to this is called Benford Law. So possibly you heard the name of Benford. But uh, Benford was not the first one to, to observe it. So the first one who observed it, I don't remember his name. I think it was in the 19th century. He observed that in the logarithm table, you know there were no computer or just uh, for multiplication. So when you had something a bit complicated to do, bloop, you were going to the table of logarithm. I used that, by the way, when I was, uh, when I was a kid in my in my, uh, when, I, when I made my, uh, my thesis, uh, you, you go to a table of uh, a logarithm, and you were taking the two logarithms you wanted. You were adding them and uh, go back to the table of logarithm. And it was much quicker to make an addition and to look in the table than to make a multiplication. And so the guy noticed that the first pages, the pages with the one in, uh, in the table were much more dirty than the, than the one later, because people were using them much more. You see? So uh, it's, uh, it's interesting. And this is the point. The point is that really, when, when from where you are in some way, you see, you say, oh, they are as numerous. 
but they are only as numerous if you have a very special position where you had a 10 to something. If you stop at 10 to so something, yes, okay, they are, they are the same number. But if you are at a random place, from a random place, you will notice that they will be much more with a 1 than the 1 with, a, with not a 1. Yeah, there, there are a zillions of discussions. So if you want to, to, to spend interesting time or to lose time, which could have been <laughs> used more interestingly somewhere else, just look at Benford Law. On uh, on internet, and you will find uh, uh, many many things to to do. So this is was essentially for this Benford law. I wanted to 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 go to that. Okay, so this was for the now now we we go to the to to our real business, which is the the Benford the um, uh, Barnard density. Okay, look at this sequence. Example, we look at this sequence. U is the union over integers n of intervals, as we did before, but much shorter intervals, 10 to the n plus 1, 10 to the n plus n. Okay? <coughs> so this sequence, if you are thinking of density, it has zero density. You have, if you count up to x, you have something like what well, the number of n, so that 10 to the n is up to x, you have log x. And since n is log x, you will have something which is log x square element. So the counting function is at most log x square, so it's really very small. And it's so small that you have also, for, uh, for the logarithmic density, that also logarithmic density. But what we would like to say is that there are large blocks. If you want to take a block which is as large as you, as you want, I want a, a block of, zil uh, I don't know, 10 to the 16 elements together. OK, fine, you can find it. Just go to 10 to the 10 to the 16. But uh, it's, it's maybe far away. But at least you have large clusters. So our point is now we would like to have some idea of the large clusters or large gaps in the same way. For us, we will be interested in clusters. OK, so, uh, so we define maybe definition. Let A be a set. Let A, I will, I will shorten my, my thing. This is not a, uh, a good way to write, but uh, let there be a, a subset of n. <coughs> so, okay, we let, we define the uniform density this is one way it is called or Banach density by then I will add something to be the limit. So what you are doing is the following. I should start from inside. I am looking at just sets of h elements. It may be h plus 1, h minus 1. Since h is tending to infinity, this is not a real problem. So I have a block of an interval of length h, and I count how many elements I have. I look at the density. For having this density, I'm looking at that. Okay. Now, what I'm looking at is to say what happens if 
I tend to infinity. So I'm looking at the limit in x. Again, you are going to tell me there will be a lower, uh, OK, fine. This will be lower or upper density. But this is just to say, OK, I have a set of le or length h. And what you would like to have is that h, you may let it tend to infinity. So this will be a limit when h tends to infinity. OK, and here there is no point to make a limb super, limb inf, this always exists. That is computation calculus. OK, good exercise for, for first year students, or I don't know, well, how do you start? Maybe you tell me second year students. <laughs> I don't know, OK, third year students. <laughs> OK, in any case, here it is, <laughs> you, you can do that just uh, easily, that this limit exists. And so this is either the limb soup, and here it's called the limb soup, and the limb inf, and it is the limb inf, and so on. So of course, if you are looking at the limb inf, it means that what you are saying is that you want to see whether there are no small gaps. OK? And if you are looking at the upper density, it means that you want to see whether there are some clusters. OK? So here, we are interested interested in the soup of A, which we call just Banner density. Oh, okay? So for us, the Banner density is the upper Banner density. Clear? So this is what we're interested in. So now the point is make it may make interest if you have a set which has zero density. Of course, if, if it has zero density, there must be gaps, you see. So the, the uniform density or the Banner density will be zero. If you have zero density, it cannot be filled. You see, if you have a set of, uh, of length h, if each time you have half of the terms, then the, the density has to be half, at least. You, you cannot do anything else. So. We are interested I here in upper density. We, we give the first example we gave is exactly an example of a set which is very rare, very thin, but which, have, which has upper density, which have a Banner density equal to one. You can find, you see this, when h is given, if x, you choose it sufficiently large, then the limb soup is equal to 1. Mm -hmm. yeah, there, there's always lim so it is lim soup. So this is for us. What are the clusters? And we want to see what are the clusters for the set V. This is what uh, you, were, you were looking at. And uh, we'll see what, uh, what we can say or what we cannot say. But uh, it's in some way, it's a good point to tup, 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 to tell you what. Uh, what we can do. Okay, let us try to get a bit used to this notion of, uh, of Banner density. Oh, it is 4.45. I stop. Yeah, okay. I was a bit afraid. That <laughs> no, no, it's fine. So let us look at the prime numbers. Where do you choose to put H in C? Sorry? In the limit? The H was inside. H was outside? No, no. no? In the X. X, X was inside. No, but there's a bit, the division by H doesn't depend on X, right? So first of all, what you are looking at is you are looking at blocks of length H. Okay. And you see what is the maximum you can get for a a block of length h. No, I'm saying the, what happens if you take the h outside the definition? The limit extending to infinity, a x plus h minus h1, because h has nothing to do with x, isn't it? No. Then limit extends until it becomes infinity. No, but a the function depends only on h, no? Yeah, the, you have something which is always so a of a x plus h minus h. 
Yeah, but then it can be very often zero. Look at your, your bad sequence. So I agree, uh, I agree with that, sorry. This is always between zero and one. And then the question which is raised is whether it's better to take the limit in x or the limit in h. So now you take that and you take the limit in h first, OK? Look at our example. Our example, you, were, you had some little gaps like that. Now, you let h tend to infinity. Whatever you have, if you have a, a block of length h, ah, what you are saying is that you take the limb soup in h. No, in any case, the number of Mm -hmm. For a pixel h, when you allow yes, uh, sorry, for pixel x, when you allow h tend to infinity, it will go to zero. Therefore, no. For example, you you want to to take first the the limit no, no, no. in h. The way you have taken is the probably the correct way. Yeah, no, I know, but uh, but the, the, no, no, but I I, I want to to understand what uh, to to answer the the question of. Uh, You, you want to put what which h inside? No, 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 no. Ah, okay. Le let me let me say. So what I am writing is this: x tends to infinity. And now, which h you are talking about? Oh, you want to put it here? But 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 then this is this this is infinity usually. No. I know, but as long as h is fixed, this is the same thing to put h inside or outside. No, I was just wondering whether is it relevant to put h inside? Is no relevant. Oh, this is the same thing because yeah, when you are looking at this, h is, is fixed. So it is the same thing. Yes, yeah. Okay. No, no. If this is what you mean, I thought you were asking, what about uh, taking the limb in h first? Well, uh, okay. I look at that. So prime numbers. Let P be the set of primes. Then we have that the uh, upper Banner density. I don't put the upper. For me, this is the Banner density. The upper Banner density of P is equal to 0. By the way, if it is equal to 0, which is the upper and the lower, the, the, the upper is 0. OK. <coughs> so you see, if you have a block, in a block, you, you cannot have a large density of primes. Let us look at the following. You cannot have, take, for example, uh, a length, an interval of length 6. In this interval, you have at most, each time you take 6 elements, you have at most 2 primes. Because uh, it has to be congruent to 1 or to minus 1 mod 6. If you take something which is, and so if you take many of them, you are sure that this, upper, this bound will be at most 1 over 6. Because if you take simply, you, you, you have some h, you divide it into, into interval of length 6. Maybe there will be one remainder. Forget about the remainder. But then it will be at most 6 over h, uh, h over 6, h over 3 element, because you have 2 in them. Now what you do is you look at 30. 30, you have not that many elements which are prime. And you look at something like that. So essentially, what is the key point here is that phi of m over m, the density of elements which are co-prime with m in an interval of length m, of course, this is periodic. So this is the number of elements which are co-prime with m in any interval of length m. 
this is the product of the prime which divides m of 1 minus 1 over p. And uh, essentially, what Euler was proving in proving that there are infinitely many primes, what Euler was proving is that this product is tending to 0. It is divergent to 0. It is the same thing as saying that the sum of the inverse of the prime number is, is tending to infinity. And this is exactly what Euler was doing. Okay? What, what he was doing is that taking this for the primes up to x and take to minus 1, and this is something like the uh, series, uh, the, the zeta series at 1, and this is divergent. So now you know that this, you may take it as small as you wish. Okay? So we can find so that this is less than epsilon for any, let us say, for any epsilon positive, we can find m such that phi of m over m is small. So now what you do is <coughs> you take some h, you cut it into interval of length m. In each of uh, them, you have at most the proportion is at most epsilon. And so if an interval of length m, h, you have at most epsilon h elements. Okay? And so this means that the density is at most epsilon, and so it is 0. Okay? <coughs> Something that will be also of interest for us is uh, where I am now. It's here. Okay, then this was this property, and uh, you have also the next one. Of at most R primes has Bernard density zero. If you take product of two primes, well, three primes, <coughs> so on, your Bernard density is zero. So, proof is induction, and we look at r is equal to two. I mean, if you know to go how to go from 1 to 2, you, you know how to do from, uh, from 2 to something else. <coughs> the, the, the trick to do that is just the one you, you need. OK, so you take product of two primes, PQ. This is the set of PQ. So now what may happen? that you may choose epsilon such that, as, as before, you see, let us call that epsilon. Phi of m epsilon divided by m epsilon is less than epsilon. We'll, uh, we'll be interested in that. OK. So if one of p or q is at most n epsilon, you don't care about n epsilon. What you say is that one, you have only a finite sequence, which are maybe two times q. Well, but two times q, if you multiply a sequence which are Banner density zero, it will stay with Banner density zero. You are not going, if you multiply by something, to increase the gaps. Okay. So what you have to say is at most an epsilon, the sequence, the sequence, if one of the sequence P0 or Q0, let us say P0 Q for P0 fixed here, and you have only finitely many, has density, but our density zero. Now there is also something you have to think of a little lemma inside this proof is that 
if mana density is zero and mana density of B is equal to zero, then the mana density of A union B is also zero. Why? Because it means that the banner density is zero. It means that if you take some interval of length h, the proportion you have of element of a is very small compared to h, at most epsilon h. But it is the same thing for the set, set b. So even if they happen to have their cluster at the same place, their cluster is not rich. It's not rich for a, it's not rich for b. It cannot be rich for the union. So this is. You, you have to work a bit to write it, but it's not difficult to understand. Okay? So then, now for this, for one sequence, uh, you take the prime and you multiply it by something. Of course, you are not going to increase the clusters, but now you are taking a finite union of such elements, and it still have Banner density zero. So now you are with the main party, which is infinite, all the P and Q are co-prime are larger than epsilon. So now this is what remains. What about the set of n, pq, which p is larger than epsilon, q is larger than n epsilon. Oh, yeah, but then you know what it is. If an element is a product of two primes which are larger than ep epsilon, it is a uh, co-prime with all the elements which are less than e epsilon. Okay, it is co-prime with an epsilon. So then you have this, it's included in the set of n such that n e epsilon is equal to one, which are co-prime with. This means the GCD, if you want to write to add GCD, you are GCD, but this means the GCD of an epsilon. Okay? It's one. And so you are happy because this density is exactly what we did for the prime. This density, density of this set, let us call it C, density of C is at most epsilon. Okay? So this is the thing, it is the union of a set which has density zero and a set which has density and epsilon, so it has density at most and epsilon, or at most epsilon, uh, epsilon. And uh, since this is true for any epsilon, it has density zero. Of course, this will increase. There will be many of them, but they still have density zero. OK. So now what is interesting, <coughs> I think, I can go now to the um, to, to to our to our business. What is what is interesting in our case So back to V. We want to say something about the Barnard density of V. <coughs> so you see, wh when we are looking at the product of two prime numbers, the density is zero. Phi is multiplicative. What can you say for five of the product of two prime numbers? Of course, we have. Phi of PQ is P minus 1, Q minus 1. I mean, Phi of P is not interesting. It is P minus 1, and this has Banner density 0. So you don't care about the elements which are just 1 primes. The contribution of elements which are just 1 primes is 0. So you may start with elements which are product of two primes. Okay. So what is interesting here, 
you, you may think, OK, the product of two elements, which are p minus 1, q minus 1, maybe it behaves as the product of two elements, pq. But it turns out that this may be quite different. What you can say for that, in any case, is that this is assume that p and q are larger than 2, odd primes. Then the density, because if 1 is, uh, is 2, this is done. You have already density 0. If one of them, if the two of them are odd, then this is divisible by 4. Okay? So you have something which is easy to find out, however, is that the density of V is at most uh, 1 over 4. Okay? <coughs> So now the point is to try to know whether you may have large consecutive elements which have this shape. Okay? If you have large consecutive elements which have this shape, it will tell you that you have the density of V, which is 1 over 4, and you would be happy. But uh, we don't know anything about that. So the only thing we can, we can say for the time being is that the, we have a conjecture that delta V is at most one quarter. And we know nothing that, uh, no conjecture, this is not a conjecture, this is a theorem. What is a conjecture is that this is true. Okay? So we know nothing about positivity. So everything we are going to do now is assuming some conjecture. OK, so let us say that, uh, ah. Yes, something even, this, you, uh, th th this is not, this is true from that, but you can do better. You can get a better upper bound if you are looking at that. Uh, you can get a better upper bound in the following way. How can I do that quickly? I, I, can, I can get a, uh, I can get a, no, I can get a better bound from the elements which are here. <laughs> I told you this is divisible by four, but there are also some other other thing you can see that, okay, if you look at p and q, I look at them with three. P mod 3 is 1 or 2. And Q is 1 or 2. If it is 1, P minus 1 is 0 mod 3. So this is 0 mod 3. And this is 0 mod 3. And if it is 2, P minus 1 is congruent to 1, and this is congruent to 1, and this is congruent to 1. This means that p minus 1, q minus 1 is never <coughs> congruent to 2 mod 3. So indeed what you have is that the set of p minus 1, q minus 1, for the time being we said that, okay, uh, p, q uh, larger than uh, 3. Strictly larger than 3. When p is 3, there is some, someone else who is here. pq larger than 3, then uh, this is uh, included in uh, the set of n for which n is congruent to uh, 0 or 4 mod 12.
So you have the following that d of d of this set is at most uh, one six. Okay. So maybe I I try to do something here, and uh, I would like to to do something here. Okay. So I will see how we can manage to 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 get something better to to arrive to to this. To, to show that <coughs> it, it should be the, the right value, let me try to see how it is possible to get. So what I want to show is the following. that the Banner density of the set of n is equal to p minus 1, q minus 1, such that n is congruent to 0, well, 12, this exists. And what I would like to show is that this density uh, is, uh, is equal to 1 over 12. I know that 0 mod 12 is something that I can, can meet, and then we'll We'll try to see how it is when it is the other value, but I cannot say it is congruent to 0 mod 4 because I will find some difficulty if it is congruent to 8 mod 12. Okay? So I want first to try to do something like that. <coughs> okay. So for that, there will be some, some, some hypotheses. As I told you, we don't know how to, to prove anything. And for that, we use hypothesis, so we shall use Dixon's hypothesis. If you know something like a Schinzel hypothesis, it's fine because it is just a bit weaker form of Schinzel hypothesis. Okay? So Dixon conjecture will tell you the following. Uh, I'll try to do this. My notes are in a okay. Dixon. Hypothesis the following. <coughs> what uh, what Dixon says is that if you take several linear forms, then the except if it is trivially false, then all of them can be made prime <coughs> at the ma at the same time. So for example, an example of, of Dixon's hypothesis is the following that there exist infinitely many Germain prime, Sophie Germain prime, which is the following. So there exists infinitely special case. I will, I will go back to the main thing, special case. There exists infinitely many primes p such that 2p plus 1 is prime. Of course, if you ask 2p, uh, you have difficulties. If you ask 2p plus 2, you have difficulties. So there must be, with the linear forms, something of the, the linear case. So what you are looking at, you are looking at this, the product x to x plus 1. <coughs> OK, so this is a polynomial. Fine. 
And uh, what you want to, to have is that there is no fixed divisor. That is to say, if you take all the GCD of all the value is equal to 1. And you see the difficulty that this is fine. Because if you take for 0, you have 1. And if you, so it's, uh, it's OK already. And if you put a, if you put a 3, and uh, you, you are happy. But if you put x plus 2, it will be fine also. But if you put x plus 1, it will not go, and so on. So essentially, what you are doing is telling that if, you, if the product of those polynomials are, uh, have no fixed divisor, then you are happy. So the first case of Dixon is when you have only one element. You have ax plus b. And it says that if you have no fixed divisor, but no fixed divisors means exactly that a and b are co-prime. And if a and b are co-prime, this is true, and this is Dirichlet theorem. And this is the only case when Dachshund theorem is true. So Dachshund theorem tells you the following. Let f1, fh be a linear polynomial with integral values with uh, integral coefficients. You can do something for integral values. It will be a bit more complicated to state. <coughs> with integral coefficients such that the product f1 fh has no fixed prime. prime divisor, then there exist infinitely many n such that f1 of n, blah, 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 fh of n are prime. Okay, only known when h is equal to 1. Of course, you can drop the, uh, the fact that they are linear polynomial, and then you get Shin's hypothesis. OK. So now, it will help to, to try to do something like that. So let us see how we are going to make the construction. So you see, we want to have consecutive elements, which are products of two primes. So what we need is to find the following. Uh, we want to find m, large, infinitely many n, such that for any h in one h between one and h, one has m plus twelve h is equal to q h minus one r h minus one. Of course, for q h rh being prime. So you see, what we want to find is multiple of, uh, multiple of 12. We want to take h, capital H, multiple of 12 consecutive, which can be written as the product of two primes. OK? And then we're happy. If this is possible to find something like that, then <coughs> for infinitely many m, then you are happy. It tells you at least that the Banner density of the values of the phi function is at least 1 over 12. Okay. <coughs> so now what we are going to do is indeed something which is very limited. We are not going to play. We don't know how to play with the fact that we have the choice in QH and RH. We're just in some way going to say we fix Rh 
And then for this RH, maybe with some properties, for this RH, we are going to find consecutive Qs for which it works. So in some way, we are not at all using all the strength of this, uh, of this product. We are just saying, OK, fix RH and try to find primes for which we have something like that. OK, where are we here? So what we want to say in another way is to say the following. We wish to have so M plus 12H uh, if we divide by RH minus 1. We want to have it as QH minus 1, and we want to have this is prime. H at most capital H. Okay, if this is a prime, we're happy. So now we have to build RH to know how it is possible to say that this is prime according to, to uh, Dixon conjecture. Okay. So what we want to find is find A and B. such that for some t, a t plus b, this will be the m plus 12 h divided by r h minus 1 plus 1 are simultaneously prime. So in our construction, Rh is fixed. Of course, Qh is not fixed. It, it has to depend on H. Otherwise, we cannot do anything like that. So what we are looking at now is that those polynomials, and we want to say that those polynomials are uh, have no fixed divisors. By the way, I think we are, we, I don't know whether they have they are integral coefficient or they are integral valued. I think this is uh, integral, integral values will be enough. Yes. So in the in the Dixon, uh, they, they need not be uh, with integral coefficient. It is enough that they are integral valued. Okay. But for linear, it should not make a difference. Sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so because for primes it is the same thing. Yeah. 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 Similarly, prime. Yeah, okay. So, first, uh, construction is. If you, if you understand what we what we want to do, then, then you go to the to the construction. In some way, there's, uh, this is just the, the, the idea to, to understand to, to write it this way. One, once you have written it that way, it's uh, it's okay. It's done. <coughs> so uh, the R H, uh, it will be. You see, you have R H minus one. So there might be divisor from R H minus one, which are in this business. So we can find. So the only point is to find the RH, and uh, so the the RH, uh, yes, RH minus one. We want to control the divisors. So one way is to use sieve, and to say this may have only finitely many number of primes, and you can do all the business with that, except that it is a bit complicated, and since we're using Dixon later on, why not use it from the very beginning? So we use Dixon here. This is not where it is important. 
we use it here and just to say that this is uh, twice a prime. Okay, this is Germain prime. Okay, so first of all, we uh, we choose prime p. times pH such that it will be called RH is equal to 2 pH plus 1 is prime. It's not in the construction that it is important that RH minus that RH is a prime, but for what we want to do later on. Remember we are going to multiply by that and to say this is a, this is a prime and so this will be this number will be QH, what we have as a prime, minus 1 times RH minus 1, and we want this to be a prime. Okay? But the fact that uh, you have pH, pH is just to control the divisor here, and uh, this is not the, the most important. So now when you have this, now what we want also is a prime, and we want such that. <coughs> For any p less than h and any h different from k, the GCD of 6h plus p k p is 1 is the GCD. This is just a technical thing. You will see why it is good for k minus h plus pk ph is equal to 1. Okay. At some point I will say this is the good, uh, the good thing so that it works. I have to make the construction of A and B. You see they are all the small primes because I am going to compare all those polynomials. So I have to compare for different values of h. And so I want to get rid of all the prime number which are less than h because they will co come immediately in the process. So this is why we have something about what is the, the, the these elements. So we let pH is equal to the product of p up to h of p. Get rid of the one that will, of course, occur when I am going to make the difference of two polynomials like that. I will find something which is h minus k. And I cannot say, I cannot avoid those prime factors. So better to think of them a priori. And then take A is equal, so this is just a construction, 6 times pH times the product H is equal to 1 to H of pH square. Okay, this is fine because you see, this is something which is just 2 pH. So A will be divisible by, uh, by this number. So it is an integer. Okay? B. Now you want B also to be divisible by uh, those things. So you put B is congruent to 0 mod 6 times pH. We will not be bothered with small primes. And minus 12 H modulo pH square. So again, you are happy because B, since B is congruent to minus 12 H mod pH square, B plus 12 H will be divisible by pH also. You are happy. OK? <coughs> and now you have FH. It's just this polynomial. When I divide FH. I take FH, which is the one I wanted. <coughs> <coughs> so then what we have to, to do is to show that the FH satisfies Dixon hypothesis. Okay? So this is just, I mean, uh, uh, not much time, but uh, this is not something complicated. In some way, we have done exactly everything which was needed to say that those polynomials are no fixed divisor. If you have a prime divisor, then you say, ah, can it be a small one? No, it can't be a small one. And if it is something different, it divides two of them. 
But then it divides also the difference. And uh, in the difference, you will find something which is h minus k. And you say, oh, no, it's not possible, because h minus k is co-prime with, uh, with every, everybody you want. Okay, So this is not that complicated. So OK, so you, you do in some way the same thing for 2h plus 4. Or you write it in such a way that it will cover the two cases. But this is fine in some way for 0 and 4 mod 12. This is fine. Now you may say, OK, but this, this is not everything. But there are some other possibilities to get the value of a phi function. Because we were looking at three primes. You know that for one prime, it doesn't give anything. For two primes, it's fine. But there is also the possibility of trying to find something which is 3 r. Uh, well, what was I using? There was no r. There was pq. I don't know, pq or something like that. If you take 3 pq, then you are happy. Because then you have something. You have some 2 p minus 1 q minus 1. You remember that this mod 3 was only 0 or 1. But this, if it, this is 1, then you have a factor 2 here. And so you are happy you recover something, but you don't recover everything. You don't recover everything. It tells you something that 8, not 8 mod 2, but 8 mod 25 is OK. With that, 8 mod 25 is OK. And then if you start to put more primes, of course, putting the prime 2 makes nothing, because in the phi function, it, it gives you a 1. So this has no interest. So what else can you do? If you start to put more elements, another prime, then this doesn't work, because you are congruent to, to, eight mod, uh, to, to 0 mod 8. So this will not be the case. But you still have the possibility to play with the prime with a square, because you can play also with looking at something which will be p square q. And then it will give you something which is a factor r square minus r times q minus 1. And with this factor, or 3, if you need, and then you have 2, optional. And when you are looking at all that, you cover really all the cases mod 4. Okay. So by playing with, all, with these games, looking at all these representations, all this possible representation, 3pq, so pq, 3pq, p square q, 3p square q, then you cover all the classes, mod 4. And so according to Dixon, according to Dixon, according to Dixon, the, you have not only you have a Banner density, which is a 1 over 4, but you have length, you have arbitrary long arithmetic progression with the, of the modulus 4, multiple of 4, who are in the, in the value of v. Okay, So you have a density which is, uh, which is 1 over 4. And on the other hand, it's, uh, you, you can prove by using, for example, some result of Ford's. What are the values which are, which are known? Uh, you can prove that you cannot do better than 1 over 4. This is quite easy to understand. It's more or less what I, what I tell you, what I told you here. So four is the best you can do. So you expect that it is 1 over 4, but we are far from knowing that. 44, 10. OK, I am cheating a bit. OK, thank you. So we'll, uh, tomorrow, we'll, uh, we'll talk about, uh, about what? Ah, yes, about representation in base 12. Nothing to do with that. Sorry? In the product, it's where the P, P H is here? Yeah. P it is all the, the product of all the primes up to H. Okay. Yes. Because you see, when we are going, the, the point is that when we are going to make the difference of such thing, <coughs> that there will be some H minus K which will, uh, which will enter into the business. And uh, you, you have no control. You cannot say, uh, for this element, uh, they, they won't be divisible by that. So better you, you, you take it in advance. 
and you and you pay attention writing something which here it's congruent you see here it is divisible by ph and here it is congruent here you you can control these small primes Th this is not very uh, very important but just to control the small primes we'll see some other place where this occurs Yes, yeah, uh, hardy little wood came after Dixon's conjecture, conjecture <coughs> and gave a quantitative form. Right. This is just a, a qualitative form. Yeah. It doesn't tell you when it will arrive and for which, what is the density of the, of the prime that you, uh, that you can recover. Yes, hardy little wood give you more than that. Uh, for infinitely many, we don't need to know how it is, but you are absolutely right, it is uh, connected with the... Uh, with that, how the little wood gives you a quantitative version of it. How many, uh, how many uh, uh, twin primes should there be, for example? Yeah, I, I, I talked about German primes because I was interested here to build with German primes. But you may think also of the, uh, the easiest is the, 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 the twin prime conjecture. Yeah. Xx X plus 1. Uh, so I, I looked, for example, at uh, the something a bit different, but I looked uh, at um, uh, the, the sum of the divisors. <coughs> yeah, the sum of the, of the divisors is something which in some way looks like uh, the, the phi function. Uh, it is something which on average is close to m and it is multiplicative and things like that. Uh, it is not strongly multiplicative. And uh, I, I couldn't even find out what is, <laughs> decent, uh, what is the decent banal density of this number. 